Hi, and welcome to this video on discrete mathematics. Today we're going to take a look at gray codes, so let's go to the blackboard. When we talk about gray codes, we're really talking about a method for listing all 0, 1 sequences of length n. So let's try first by using a naive way, and this uses the binary or base 2 representation of the integers 0, 1, 2, up to 2 to the power of n minus 1. As a simple example, let's take n equals 3. If we write down the numbers 0, 1, 2, up to 7, then we can start to write down what their representations are in base 2. So 0 is 0, 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 1, and we keep going and we write out all of these expansions. The base 2 representation of a number is similar to a base 10 representation of a number in that the rightmost position represents the units and the next rightmost position represents the twos place. So here, 3 is equal to having one two and then one unit. So that's how we get the representation of three. The representation for six gives us one in the fours position and one in the twos position. So this is one way to write out all of the eight different zero one sequences of length three. But now I wanna show you another way to write out these sequences. Let's start with zero 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 again, but now I'm gonna write them down in this order. And the key thing to notice is that if I compare any two consecutive sequences in this list, I'll notice that they differ in exactly one position. The motivation for listing these numbers or these sequences in this particular way, where between each pair of sequences, you only have to change one position, is the original way that computers were built. Computers were built using electrical switches. And so if you were going to go between one sequence of zeros and ones and another sequence of zeros and ones, it's a lot easier if only one switch has to change. So let's think about this, for example. Here, our motivation tells us that if we have to go between a sequence 0, 1, 1 and then another sequence 1, 0, 0, all three electrical switches are going to have to change states. Whereas in the second listing of these sequences, it requires only one switch to change states. If we take a look at the sequence 1, 0, 1, we next need to go to 1, 0, 0. So all we have to do is change the third switch from a 1 to a 0. So this is an example of a gray code. And by the way, gray codes are named after Frank Gray, who worked at Bell Labs. Now, of course, this was the original motivation for the problem, but gray codes are still used for day-to-day -day error correction in digital communication. So now let's precisely define a gray code. A gray code is a list of the 2 to the power of n binary sequences of length n, such that consecutive sequences in the list differ in exactly one position. And a gray code is called cyclic if the first and last sequences in the list also differ in exactly one position. Next, what I want to talk about is how a gray code can be thought of in a graph theoretic point of view. The n cube, denoted qn, is the graph whose vertices are labeled by the binary sequences of length n, where two vertices are adjacent if and only if their sequences differ in exactly one position. So to get a good feeling for this, let's take a look at a few examples. First, let's take Q1. So there are only two sequences of length 1, 0 and 1, and we adjoin them because they are different in exactly that position. Next, if we take a look at Q2, we can think about it by first drawing a copy of Q1 and adding zeros in front, and another copy of Q1 and adding ones in front. Now we'll join up the corresponding vertices and we'll see that they in fact differ in exactly one position. So we get this little four cycle. If we now take a look at Q3, we need to repeat basically the same process. We can build up Q3 by drawing two copies of Q2. So first I'll draw Q2 and now I'll make a copy. And now in the first copy, I'll put a zero in front of all of the sequences. And in the second copy, I'll put a 1 in front of all the sequences. Now I just have to join up the corresponding vertices in the two copies of Q2, and I've achieved the graph Q3. So we've observed that Qn has a recursive structure. It can be thought of having one part called A and another part called B, 
where A is isomorphic to Qn minus 1 and B is also isomorphic to Qn minus 1. And then we join up corresponding vertices of A and B. So that's a nice easy way to recursively build up the n cube Qn. Now that you've seen a couple of examples of an n cube, if you know what a Hamilton path is, then I suggest you pause the video and look for a Hamilton path in each of the examples we've seen. In the first example, a Hamilton path is just the single edge. In the second example, we can find a Hamilton path by going like this through the cycle. In the third example, let's find a Hamilton path by going from top, down, across, up, over to the other side, down, across, and up. What you should notice is that a gray code is equivalent to finding a Hamilton path in the n cube. So now we've learned what a gray code is and we've played with a few examples. In the next video, we'll take a look at a recursive way to build up gray codes. See you there.